budget process is never easy, but we are at a tipping point um, right now in the city of Providence. The mayor's budget has requested an increase of 15 million over the last year. And in order for us to achieve that end, we need to make cuts and unfortunately raise taxes. But after this year's evaluation, it was hard for us as a city council to make that choice. Instead, we explore other options that will help to mitigate the tax burdens for all residents. I ask you here today because we want to announce the City Council Finance Committee recommended plan to put forward a progressive tax plan that would put all homeowners on an even footage. The people that experienced the greatest increase in taxes were the most vulnerable among us. Um, the Finance Committee and the Chairman had one um, purpose on behalf of the City Council. We asked them to bed the budget, to look at it, and to ensure that all neighborhoods carry an equal load. I'm proud to say that we have achieved that end. We believe that Providence will be able to pass a budget that is fair. It is my pleasure to introduce the Chairman of Finance, Councilman Johnny Gliossi, who's going to explain the more details of our plan. Chairman Gliossi, the floor is yours. Thank you, Madam President. Welcome, everybody, and good morning. First of all, Thank, by the way, the council president, the president pro tem, the majority leader, and all the members of the council and the finance committee who are here today. We can't do this without them, and we can't do this without working with the people of Providence and also with the executive branch. But as you know, the council president put it in May, May's budget is proposing an additional $15 million that he's requesting. Now, as you all know, $15 million means you have to come from someplace, and the council president's correct. You have to either, you have to raise taxes, you have to raise revenue, you have to make adjustments. So what we're concerned about where we are right now is just so you get a sense, past five years we've had basically no tax increase. We've also had the cost of a city has gone up anywhere from three to five percent. And as you know also, um, we had a revaluation which had extremes on both end of the spectrum. From anybody who's getting a five percent um, increase in value to some folks getting a 30 to 40 percent increase in value. So those big swings create problems. Um, don't forget, of course, unfortunately, we have $1 billion unfunded pension liability, as well as a shrinking tax base. 41 percent of the property in Providence is no longer taxable. Those are the financial realities. Also, on the mayor's proposal, as the council president put it, you know, we're looking for several things. Freezing commercial tax rate, freezing the tangible rate, freezing the car rate. So all that was left for them to deal with was residential. So in the mayor's proposal, he's looking for 15 more million dollars. And in that, by the way, there are some justified increases. Of course, you have things dealing with the pension issues, you have the typical cost of doing business in the city. But there are also millions of dollars of additional things that you don't necessarily have to do right now, which are additional jobs, pay raises, and all the respect, millions of dollars for different types of parties and events. Now, why do I say that? We all like to have a good time, but the problem is when you have a budget that's going to have a potential devastating impact on the most vulnerable in the city of Providence, having a party while they get thrown out of their house is not something we should celebrate about. And that's what we're concerned about. So we're looking to create a more fair, progressive, reasonable application of a tax policy throughout the city of Providence. Now, as you know, the city of Providence is a one-off in theory. We have this bifurcated tax rate with non-owner, owner, et cetera. So we're looking to just pretty much go into line with other cities and towns are doing this day around. Go back to one tax rate and bring back the homestead exemption. Now, by doing that, we hopefully can smooth out these swings. And as you can tell from some of the storyboards here, some of the swings on the mayor's proposal, we have people whose value of houses 
over a million are getting a $4,000 tax decrease, and folks who are in the middle of the road getting a $1,000 tax increase. I think it's important and fair that we look at those numbers in a more holistic approach, and we all believe we have an ethical and moral obligation to try to smooth out these numbers. We all realize we cannot prevent a tax increase, but I think we definitely can say, instead of that person getting a $4,000 tax break, maybe they get a $1,000 tax break, and that person who's getting a $1,000 tax increase, maybe they can get it down to maybe a couple hundred dollars. Now, just to give you a sense, unfortunately, the person who's getting the biggest tax increase are the most vulnerable in the city of Robbins. The people who are getting the biggest tax break are the ones who are in better financial places than all of us, at least myself, and I know most of my colleagues behind me. So we're looking for a fair, progressive application. Um, and it's also understanding that, you know, we want to be a city that welcomes the homeless, not create homeless. And we're concerned that this, potent this potential proposal will have that potential impact. Um, so what's before us is this idea of creating a single rate, which will go to approximately 2456, and then we're gonna create a, um, a homestead based on value. So the first um, zero to 350,000, it'll be approximately 40% homestead, and then above that is about 25%. Now, this is a proposal. We have, we still have about a month and a half left in the budget season. We've, the council and the committee has been working hard with the financial team, by the way, for the past month, has been doing a lot of modeling and trying to figure out what is the sweet spot? Where is the most reasonable, um, fairest model? And we're working on it. This is what we're proposing today, but of course we're willing to work with all people involved to make it better as well as part of it is also we have to deal with some um, uh, revenue adjustments and some cuts in the budget. Like I said, it's hard to tell people who potentially may be losing their homes that a person's getting a pay, pay increase or a new job at their expense. So these are the kinds of things, hard decisions we have to make. Um, so when you look at that, I know it's uh, another story about Mr. Pro Tem. This will give you a sense of what we're talking about. Here, as you can see in the green, what happens is on the May's proposal, the folks in the green, the 81 percenters, are the ones who would have the biggest negative impact in the May's proposal. And the folks in the one and two percenters would have the greatest benefit. What we're looking to do is smooth it out. That's the goal, and that's what the proposal is. Thank you.